Hey there, this is Akshit Madan and welcome back to a new video. And in this video, my purpose is to act as a teacher and tell you about AI agents, how they work, why are they existing and what is this hype around these AI agents today? And you are a five year old. So you also have to understand that you are a five year old and you don't know anything about these AI agents. So this video is for those who are new to this. They are beginners, they are in college or they are freshers and they want to step inside this AI world. Okay, so many founders, so many investors talking about this generative AI, talking about this LLMs and agents and you feel out of the room, right? You see, you feel FOMO inside you. Okay, so that's why I'll explain you all the common terminologies in this agentic systems in very plain, simple English, just like explaining to a five year old. But before that, do check out my discord channel. It's a new server that I've created for solving your questions, doubts, sharing resources and job opportunities, talking to founders and this server is new. So it's a good place where you can ask questions and you will get very certain response. Plus nowadays I'm sharing all my resources on this discord server itself. So do check it out. Now let's get started. Okay. So let's start with a question. Why are we humans only so intelligent? Why not any other animal like cat, dog, lion, tiger, elephant? They are much larger than us. They are much stronger than us, but why only we are able to rule the world why only we are so intelligent we were able to create nations borders fight and go to wars over silly reasons we were able to create so many languages we built the computer we went to the space we were able to create so many unique games create fun activities other animals also have eyes ears nose arms legs much larger than us even their brain some of the animals brains are also larger than us why only we are able to do everything that you see around you? Why only we were able to build planes and buildings? The reason lies in our brain. Our brain is much more developed than any other animal's brain. That's why it has got the capability of reason, curiosity and questioning back. That's the reason we were able to solve so many maths problems. Let's take a simple example. We saw an apple falling from the tree and we questioned it. Why it only goes down? Why not up? And then we found the reasoning behind it. So curiosity, questioning back and then came coming up with the reason is the reason that we were able to build so many things around us. So now you have understood that the power of our brain is very important. We were able to do so many things because our brain is much more developed. Now let's get a bit technical. Consider the brain of a cat. Cat also has brain, but not that smart. So consider the brain of a cat as GPT-2. Okay. So, you know, there are so many machine learning models, LLMs around us, right? So we will, we will solve it. We will see how, uh, what are these LLMs and how are they important for building an agent? Okay. So consider the brain of a cat as GPT-2. So you know that GPT-2 is not that smart as the latest models that we have, right? And cat's brain is also not, not that developed. So GPT-2 is cat's brain. Then we have got GPT 3.5, which is much smarter than GPT 2. So compare it with the brain of a dolphin. So dolphin's brain is considered smarter than most of the animals. So GPT 3.5 is dolphin. And then we have got GPT 4. Okay. Compare it with the brain of a gorilla. After humans, gorillas and chimpanzees are also considered very smart. And then we got LLMs and models like deep sea car one and open AI O1 and O3, which are able to generate reasoning behind the generation behind the answer that they give. So similarly, our brain is also able to reason, show curiosity and question back in the same way, R1, O1 and O3 are the reasoning models and they ask questions to themselves before giving an output. So that's why I gave you this analogy. So now you have understood in any system to perform any task, the brain is the most significant part because there only logical part is happening. Reasoning is happening and calculations are happening. So if you want to create a system which can do tasks like humans, you have already built the most important part, the brain you have, you have got the LLMs, right? All of these big tech companies have built the brain for you. Okay. So if you are creating a system that can do tasks like a human being, the most important part is done. You have got the LLM, right? LLM is equal to brain. 
great let's go a bit deeper let's say a person is dead okay and doctors came and they saw okay he is einstein he is very smart let's take out his brain and use it so they took out his brain and put it in the refrigerator do you think that brain is useful for us can that brain solve solve mysteries of the world no that brain is just a piece of flesh which is sitting inside a refrigerator getting chilled okay so now we understand we are able to come to a conclusion that brain yes it is the most important part but alone it cannot do anything right to solve the mysteries of the world you need to give eyes to that brain you need to give hands to that brain you need to give skin to that brain you need to give legs to that brain in simple terms you need to fit that brain into a body because a body has got all the peripherals peripherals means eyes ears nose hands arms legs all of these parts if you don't give this body parts your llm that means the brain is not that useful so all of these things that we have got which helps to do a task helps perform an action they are called tools and tools and llms these two are very significant for any agentic system great let's see an example okay this was technical now let's go uh, and see a very simple example let's say you have to book flight tickets for your parents okay so yes your brain can tell which ticket you should buy because your brain can actually see this uh, price uh, the price of this ticket is just 5000 rupees and the price of the other flight is just 6000 rupees so you will pick the cheaper one so your brain was able to do the calculation and see your budget and make a conclusion great but this was just the logical part if you really have to build a system that can book tickets like humans you have to go to a site you have to type your destination you have to type your timings and then you have to connect your card you have to do the payment and then your task will be completed so in this process there are a lot of places where your fingers your hands will be required your eyes will be required right oh, not only just the brain brain yes brain is doing the logical part but what about clicks what about typing for that you need your peripherals so here comes the power of tools which can actually do these tasks for you so brain comes up with the conclusion comes up with the output but to put that output in real environment you need tools one more term over here so till now in our agentic system we have understood what an llm is it's a brain we have understood what a tool is it's just a peripheral that helps perform an action next important thing is rag retrieval augmented generation forget about this terminology let's take a very simple example again let's take this example itself this flight booking system so forget about the machine also let's see let's take an example of a human being your mom has asked you to book a ticket but you are not god right you don't know what are the prices you don't know at what time the flight is going to fly so you need to go to an external data source that data source is called the internet right you as a human also can't do this on your own you have to go to internet find out the prices and then your brain will be able to make a judgment and then your hands and fingers will be able to book a ticket so before doing any logical part you had to go to a external data source so similarly a machine has to go to an external data source that is the internet right so in any agentic system if your llm has to get the information from an external data source this process is called rag where you connect your llm with external data center right so in our case our external data center is nothing but the internet where there are so many flight Uh, uh flights and you have to pick the best one so you have to bring that information give it to llm llm will decide and then your tools will perform the action so three things llm tools and rag they all are very significant for any agentic system one more example i like giving examples and making you understand let's say you have to build an agent that can do shopping on behalf of you okay so for shopping you will not like to buy the clothes that you already have in bulk so that agentic system has to see your wardrobe first right before going to any shopping site 
so for that it has to get the power of vision it it needs to see right so you need a tool uh, we humans have got a tool they are called eyes using eyes we can see but luckily our machines have also that capability using the camera so camera are the eyes of any machine so we can connect the camera feed to our agent so that it can see your wardrobe right so once it has analyzed your wardrobe now it's the turn of the brain it can actually see which which type of cloth and the color you don't have in your wardrobe let's say i don't have a black t-shirt so then it will try to make a search on the shopping sites for black t-shirts so the next step it has to go to shopping sites so that means we need some external data source right so it goes to shopping websites like amazon and mintra and fetches all the black t-shirts then again it's the turn of the brain to make a decision it will compare quality right it will compare reviews it will compare the prices and then come up with a decision okay now it has made the decisions that this t-shirt from amazon it needs to buy then it again needs the power of tools because they have to open the browser they have to scroll they have to click on that buy button and then they have to make the transaction so you can see how rag tools and llms are working together to perform a simple task that humans do awesome we have understood so many terms one more one more example and you will be equipped with one more technical term in this agentic system let's say your mom comes to your room and tells you that hey akshit uh, let's eat pasta tonight okay but you don't want to eat it so what you thought that hey yesterday i went with my friends and we had pasta only so i don't want to eat pasta again tonight okay so how come you came up with this conclusion how come you made this decision because you have you had that data present in your memory right in your memory you already know that you have already eaten pasta yesterday i don't want to eat it to, to tonight also okay so based on your previous memory based on your previous actions you are not making an action today of eating pasta you want to eat something else you want to perform some other action okay so this means that for humans memory is also very important right if memory was not a factor you will never be able to reach to college because you will forget what uh, you learned uh, in first class second class third class right so memory is also very important now let's see an example of an agent let's say uh, you are building an agent that can apply for jobs on behalf of you so when that agent gets triggered it goes on the internet goes to the internet and finds out all the jobs where you can apply so to this agent you have already provided your resume so one thing when that agent is running it should not apply to the same job again it should not even get that job description again if you have already applied there so this is one place where you need the memory where you need to look at your past and see if you have already applied there okay then it also needs to remember your resume right so your data from your resume which got extracted from your pdf is also saved in the agent's memory so that it can perform a comparison between jd job description and your resume and then only it will apply to the jobs it should not apply uh, to the jobs where you are not a good fit so you can see that memory is also very important so llms tools rag and memory they four combined together four combined work collaboratively to perform actions and build an agent now let's put them together whenever any agent now i'm not giving an example but generalizing everything for you whenever you have built an agent first thing it does it takes the input gets triggered right take all the input values that you need to provide gets triggered and it thinks okay so it is doing the thought process okay so based on the thought it comes up with some actions that you can perform okay now based on the actions you need to see whether to perform that action you have the necessary tools in hand or not okay so let's say it got the tool it needs to go to the go to the browser it has got that tool and whatever action you did it will observe that okay it will see the output of that action and it will come up with the observation based on the observation it will reason so here comes the reasoning part it will reason and thinks whether it should end it it should end the process whether the all the tasks are completed or it should again go go to the thought process 
and again come up with the actions, again find out the tools, again does the observation. So it repeats till it finds out in the reasoning part that all the tasks given to me are done. That's how an agentic system works. Thought, actions, observations, reasoning, and the cycle repeats. Great. Last thing. Okay, last thing and after that I'll go away. In a real system, you cannot just rely on one agent. In real agentic system, let's say you are building a robot. So a robot cannot just depend on one single agent because an agent can only do a very specific task. Okay, an agent is created just for a very specific role. If you give multiple responsibilities to an agent, it will get confused. And this is called hallucination, where you give so many inputs to the agent and you give so many responsibilities to the agent that it gets confused and gets into hallucination. It, get, it, it tries to think anything and it is unable to perform the action. Okay, so that's why we have multi agents and we call that system as multi agent systems. Okay, where every agent is given very specific role, very small, small tasks and responsibilities. Let's say you're building a social media agent. So one agent will be there for content creation. One agent will be there for content strategy. One agent will be there for validating whether these responses are good or not. And one agent will be there for posting them on Instagram and LinkedIn. Okay. So to manage all of these agents, you need an orchestrator. You, you have must have seen an orchestra, right? It's a musical uh, thing uh, where an orchestra in an orchestra, there is one orchestrator, which guides all the musicians. What's what type of instrument should be played? I'm not an expert, but you must, you can see this image. So similarly in multi-agentic systems where you have multiple agents working together, performing various tasks, taking up various roles and responsibilities, you need an orchestrator. Okay. So we'll not go deeper into this, but this concept is called multi-agent orchestration where multiple agents work together and perform their task. Okay. So I think that's it. I just wanted to cover this much in this video, trying to make it simple to understand for anyone, what are these agents, right? So I hope you like this video. Don't forget to check out the discord channel. And uh, if you have any concern and doubt, reach out to me on LinkedIn. And if you want to get on, get on a one-on-one -on -one discussion with me, check out my top mid link. Okay. So till the next video, keep coding, keep innovating and thanks a lot.